Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so very much for being with us today. As we close out this Saturday, what we began on Monday, and that is overcoming the fear of failure. Anything worth doing will never be easy. And because it's never easy, you have to have what is called grit, tenacity, and determination never to give up. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Paul says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You want to reap your harvest? Don't give up. It's never easy. You must have grit, determination. Don't get weary. Don't say, oh, my God, when is when am I going to see my breakthrough? Just keep on working. You will reap your harvest if you don't give up. Yesterday, we talked about how great people like Muhammad Ali, Ford Motor Company, use their failures to build their successes. Muhammad Ali fought Doug Jones before he fought Sonny Liston. It was his worst fight, but he learned from that fight what he needed to carry over into the fight against Sonny Liston, which he won. Ford Motor Company had a car called the Edsel, and it was a flop. It was a dismal, embarrassing flop. But they took the technology, what they learned from the Edsel, to invent the Ford Mustang, and it became their all-time bestseller. Whenever you fail, learn from the failure. Don't quit. Don't stay down. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Your fertilizer is, as Rick Pitino says, it stinks. It's, it's fertilizer. Your failure is fertilizer. Fertilizer stinks, but fertilizer helps you to grow. Whenever you have a failure, your response, and always remember that life is about how you respond to what's happening to you. You cannot control what happens, but you can control how you respond to what happens to you. And your response to failure is critical. It's critical. You can either respond by being bitter, which many people are, or you can respond by being better. How can I be better and not bitter as a result of my failure? Let me give you some words that rhyme. You can kind of write these things down and give yourself a grade of how you're doing when it comes to these four words. First of all, let your failure educate you. Let it educate you. That's what the Bible teaches. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says this. A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never learn, can never be successful, excuse me, can never be successful. Or you could say never learn, be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another truth. In other words, what does it mean? Confess, I made a mistake, forsake them means I'm gonna learn from them and not try to repeat those same mistakes. What he's saying here is, and you get another chance, is that failure is there to educate you. Secondly, let your failure motivate you, motivate you. Proverbs 20 verse 30 says this, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. We don't always change because we see the light. We change because we felt the heat. And sometimes the heat and the pain of a certain situation motivates us to be better. So one, let your failure educate you. Two, let your failure motivate you. Three, let your failure elevate you, take you to another level. Romans chapter five, verses three through four says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to be patient. And that word patient doesn't mean just twiddling your thumbs. It's the Greek word macrothermos. Listen to that, macrothermos. What does macro mean? Micro means small, macro means large or long. Micro is something small, macro with an A is something long. Thermos, thermal, keeps something warm. Thermal underwarm, where it keeps your body warm. So what does macrothermos mean? Macrothermos means long heat able to endure the heat. And he's saying that as a result of failure, we should learn how to endure some things. 
And as a result of learning how to endure, endurance is important, endurance develops strength of character. How do you define a person of character? A person of character is a person who does not give up when the heat is on, amen. And, 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 and failure develops patience, patience develops character in us and helps us to trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Amen. Let your failures educate you, motivate you, elevate you. Become a better person as a result of your failure. You know, let failure sensitize your heart. Let failure sensitize your heart uh, for other people's failures. And so you will be less judgmental when you see other people fail. So failure, what? Here's the rhyme. Educate you, motivate you, elevate you, demonstrate you. What do I mean by demonstrate you? There's some people who know that you failed. They've known, they know that you you had an EDSO or you didn't do well against Doug Jones. It's out there. But when God brings you back, those same folk who were mocking your failure are the same folk who will have to say, my God, I didn't think that she could come back. I didn't think that he could come back, but you made a tremendous comeback and you were able to do something remarkable and you become a demonstration, a trophy of God's grace because God loves to lift failures. Let it educate you, motivate you, elevate you, and let your failure demonstrate you. In the Bible, there are multiple failures in the Bible, people that we don't think of as failures, but they were failures. For example, when I think of Joseph, remember Joseph was 17 years old and, and Joseph was dreaming of, of being somebody going up. He said he saw the sun, moon, and stars bow down to him. But Joseph ended up as a prisoner. That was a failure. To plan it um, going up, but to end up as a prisoner in Egypt is a failure. But it was that failure that positioned him to become the second over the greatest empire of his day, which was Egypt. So the failure uh, put him in a position to become a very great man. And he became a trophy of God's grace. You think of Moses. Moses was just trying to deliver the children of Israel when he was 40 years old from slavery in Egypt. And he killed a man who was beating an, an, a, Jewish, a Jewish servant, a Jewish slave. He killed him. But it didn't work out. The people were not ready for deliverance. And Moses had to go into exile for 40 years as a failure. He went from being the prince of Egypt to being a shepherd, an under shepherd under a man named Jethro. But he would eventually become the greatest leader in the history of the world. Moses did, the big, the big Mo. But it was a failure. He started off with the failure because you're not a failure because you fall down. You're a failure when you refuse to get up. It's quitting that makes you a failure. And then, of course, you do remember Peter. Peter looked at Jesus at the Lord's Supper and said, everyone else may deny you, but not me. And Jesus looked right in Peter's face and said, before the rooster crows, you would have denied me three times. And guess what? Peter denied Christ three times. And like an alarm clock, the rooster said, cock a doo doo I think that's what a rooster says. Whatever a rooster says, it, 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 it roared. And Peter remembered, oh, my God, I failed the Lord. That was on that was on Friday or Thursday night. But Sunday morning, the resurrected Christ restored Peter and he became a better man as the result of the failure. And so can you let your failure motivate you, let it educate you, let it elevate you. And by the grace of God, let it demonstrate you so that people can say, oh, my God, look at where you came from. Look at where you are now and never be ashamed of your testimony. Tell people how you have failed. Let, let people know your trophy of great, God's grace. Uh, let, let people know. Sometimes when you're willing to be open and say, you know what, I failed 
as a husband, I failed as a wife, I failed as a parent, but by the grace of God, I'm gotten back on, on my feet again. I was once in jail or I once sold drugs. I once used drugs. I once had a bad habit, but God delivered me. Somebody needs to hear your comeback story because God is the God of the great comeback. You're not through until God says you are through. Let me say that is in closing. You are not through until God says you're through. It does not matter what the critics or the prognosticators say. They cannot determine my, your destiny because they don't control your destiny. God does. God is able to weave your failures into your in your mistakes into your greatest successes if you trust him. Amen. Your best days are ahead of you. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it in your heart? My best days are ahead of me by the grace of God. And I'm going to thank God in advance for I know God is going to take me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful week of lessons we have learned together from your word. What good is it for us to spend the time to hear it if we're not going to live it out? Help us to live out what we learn. Get with us. Be with us. Give us your power and your grace to be what you have called us to be. And we will give you praise and glory because it all belongs to you. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me this week for another powerful point to, to ponder. And if you don't have a church home, I'd like to encourage you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville. You can become a part of our E campus. You can become a digital disciple. So just email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Well, tomorrow is the Lord's Day and it is Mother's Day. And we want to celebrate the mothers of our city, state and nation, the mothers of our church. So please be with us tomorrow for Mother's Day. Uh, don't forget to dress up. It's Mother's Day. Even if you're at home, take pictures and send them to us so we can post all of the wonderful pictures. For example, if you have a Mother's Day dinner at your home, please send them. That's what we love. We want pictures of families and pictures of what you're doing so that we can post them uh, on our webpage and let people know uh, how you're celebrating uh, Mother's Day. It's also the Lord's Supper. So we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper and Mother's Day tomorrow. So be prepared to observe the Lord's Supper with us tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me this week for the powerful points to ponder. I hope you have been blessed and enriched this week and that you will get up from your failure and you will move on to new levels of greatness by the grace of God. Well, uh, I pray that you'll have a great day the rest of the day. But until we meet again, don't forget our COVID-19 protocol. We've been saying it for over a year now. And that is during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. Peace and blessings to you. See you tomorrow in worship.